aluminum iodide is what you get when you mix aluminum, which is a metal. And I know it's a metal because this darkened staircase here is the semi-metals. Anything to the left of it is a metal. Aluminum, a metal. And iodine on the right-hand side of the staircase is a non-metal. It's important to know that because a metal and a non-metal will combine to make an ionic compound. And that means that there is a transfer of electrons from one to the other, from the metal to the non-metal, because that's how it always works. Now, how do we show that transfer of electrons? Well, aluminum is in group 13, so it brings three valence electrons with it. I'm going to give myself an AL atom with one, two, three valence electrons. Beautiful. Iodine is here in group 17. That means each iodine atom brings seven valence electrons. There's my I. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, non-metals want eight electrons in their outer shell. It's called the octet rule. It's what makes them stable. And it also, like the reason is it makes them feel similar to a noble gas, which are the atoms that are already stable on the periodic table. So how can iodine, which brought seven electrons with it, get an eighth? Hmm, aluminum can give one away. There you go. That's great. Now the, the iodine is stable has seven plus one equals eight electrons. But aluminum still has two electrons left over. Where can it put those? More iodines could come into play. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons for that iodine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons for a third iodine. And now the aluminum can donate an electron here and give away an electron here. And now aluminum has transferred all of its electrons to non-metals. Each of the iodines has eight electrons. That's nice and stable. The aluminum's given away all the electrons in its outer shell. So it's like next outer shell is the one below it, which is full by default. Looks like we know what kind of transfer is happening here. One aluminum gave away its electrons to three iodines, which is why the formula is Ali3. But let's finish this off by drawing the completed Lewis structure. We have an aluminum atom with no valence electrons anymore, or at least no electrons in that what was its outer shell. And it gave away three of them, so its charge is plus three. Now we also have to draw three iodine atoms each of the iodines now has eight valence electrons, and that's one more than they started with, so that's a charge of minus one. Another iodine, bam, 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 eight electrons, minus one charge. A third iodine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, with its minus one charge. That is the completed Lewis structure for aluminum iodide. Easy to draw once you know what to expect of three electrons on the aluminum to start, giving its electrons away to three iodines, which require one more electron to become stable. Absolutely beautiful, just like you are, my friends. Best of luck.